Hello and welcome to Pride TV with a big thanks to Kennard Self Storage and Ridges Hotels and resorts. Now it's been a huge week in hockey here in Australia but before we get into that let's welcome our two guests, the New South Wales Pride coaches Peter Shea and Brent Livermore, the hugely respected in hockey circles Peter Shea and of course Brent you don't need an introduction with those Olympic medals and one of them being in the gold colour. Well, welcome on board. Thanks for having Thank us you. Tamsin. Well, as I said, it's been a hugely exciting week in hockey, hasn't it, around the country? And let's start in Perth, where those all-important Olympic squads were announced. Let's take a look first at the women's squad uh, that was announced on Monday. It has eight Olympic debutants, and this team will be ranked fourth going into these games. Emily Chalker, of course, is a name known to many, going to her third Olympics. Now, Brent, I'll, uh, Peter, I'll start with you, actually. Um, the five New South women uh, New South Wales women made that cut. Initial thoughts on the squad? Oh, I think it's a very good squad. I, uh, having a look at the balance between the experienced players and the, the younger players, I, I think they've got the balance pretty right. Um, the average age is around about that 27 uh, year old mark, which uh, indicates to me that they've got a lot of potential to push for some uh, um, medals, uh, hopefully gold. Uh, against a good quality um, opposition but uh, I think they've got the balance right with that experience and a, a few young people coming into the group to uh, give a bit of more enthusiasm if you like for um, the, the competition. Now Katrina Powell's been named as the coach of the Hockey Roos. She hasn't had a lot of time with the ladies yet. Um, do you think she's had enough time to make a real difference for that team going to Tokyo? Look, it's going to be difficult for a, a new coach to come in at such a, torch, a short time frame, but uh, she's been in and around the group for a long time now, so she's had the, the experience with the, the individuals, so she knows the players pretty well, uh, the assets, the, the abilities that they have, and uh, her, her role that she's um, come out and openly said is to um, uh, mould the team into a cohesive unit and if they can do that then uh, I, I think there'll be a, a good chance of winning some medal or a medal. <laughs> well Brent, the pools have, have come out and we know that they're in that pool B uh, um, against Japan, China, New Zealand, uh, Spain and Argentina. It looks like it's a pretty good pool for the Australians to be in, don't you think? Yeah, without a doubt. I think there's an opportunity there. I think they're going to have some tough matches always against China and Japan, the host nation. Uh, but I think when you look at it, they'll be, you know, New Zealand, Argentina is uh, probably going to be their threat. And then, then it comes down to the quarterfinal crossovers. So opportunity for them for sure, get into the, into the finals and then hopefully into the medal, medal rounds and gold. Okay, well, we've taken a look at the women's team now. Let's take a look at that men's squad that was announced on Monday. It's a pretty impressive lineup, and I think one of the most impressive things about it is that there are seven New South Wales team members on that team. Brent, you know what it takes to win the gold medal. They're ranked number one. Can this squad do it? Definitely, I think so. Look, you know, it's, it's a strong team. They've been consistently performing well. Uh, 2014 World Cup, um, always ranked number one on, or two since that since that World Cup and unfortunately sort of stumbled a little bit at the last Olympic Games in Rio. But the Kookaburras are definitely on the right track. Uh, they've had a strong 27 man squad and a really good culture that's been built over a long time and you know now they're coming together and just to put the final touches on their Olympic preparation. Uh, really exciting for this team and fantastic for New South Wales to have seven out of the 16 athletes uh, representing. Peter, as a coach with over 30 years experience, um, you know what it takes to go out there and perform. How do you think the squad's going to cope being over there in Tokyo with no crowds and their family and friends back home, not there with them? Look, it'll be very difficult, a different type of Olympic Games to not have the, the noise and the crowd. I remember back in uh, leading up to the Seoul Olympics when the Australian women were trying to uh, cope with being in Seoul for that Olympics that they had crowd noise as part of their training to uh, try and simulate uh, the experience of being in a, a noisy venue. That probably won't happen at this Olympics. There'll be, it'll be a quieter stadium which potentially not having the home support for a, a, a side like Japan when we're playing in, in, in their hometown 
is that that might be an advantage for us for to play and treat it just like a normal tournament. I saw Edwina Bone come out this morning in the papers and said that she's going to treat this differently to the way she treated Rio because of the way that the Olympics will be run this time and treat it more like a, a, a normal tournament with, uh, with not the crowds there and um, hopefully that'll be uh, a level out the uh, environment a little bit better than um, trying to be in front of a noisy crowd with all the communication and um, uh, the motivation that that brings with um, you know the local side so it's going to be very different but that's part of the preparation leading into that tournament. Well it's certainly a unique time uh, for the teams heading over there. Now we've got that pool that Australia is in there in pool A and um, Brent talk to us through this this pool that they're in. They actually go up against Japan in that first game to start off the hockey tournament at the Olympics on that uh, 24th of July. How do you think they're going to go lining up against Japan first up? Yeah, look, I think it's going to be an interesting road for them. You know, Japan first round, they haven't played international competition until just recent weeks. Uh, they haven't played uh, any other nations other than the Oceania nations. So getting to the Olympic Games is going to be a test, 18 months without that international competition. But look, they're going to be primed, they're going to be ready. Um, they're going to come up against some stronger stronger matches later on in the in the week, obviously throughout the games. Uh, Argentina, uh, I think, are re ranked number seven in the world. But then India is also going to be a challenge when we're ranked number four in the world. So they're going to be coming on uh, into the tournament pretty strong. But I think the other pools probably got the European nations that they'll get an opportunity to have a look at um, and, and meet them in the quarterfinals before, again, progressing hopefully to the, the medal rounds and the gold medal. Well, the Olympic teams weren't the only teams announced this week. Now, I know you two are going to be really interested to see these teams get announced. You had something to do with the naming of them, obviously, being the coaches of both the New South Wales Pride teams. Now, let's take a look at the women's team first. Now, this team, uh, Peter, you're coaching. You've come in to coach these ladies, and they definitely do look like they're going to go a lot better than they went in that first inaugural season of the Hockey One uh, Cup. What do you think? this team's going to bring to the table? Look, I think the um, having the Australian squad members potentially in this group will be highly beneficial with the, the young group that I've picked here um, for the um, Pride uh, Championship this or campaign this uh, season. I, I think it's a great blend of uh, youth, talent and experience. Um, and those Australian players coming back off an Olympic campaign and the players who have um, unfortunately missed out on the campaign will add a, a lot of experience and a lot of t um, uh, a lot of ability to be able to compete with um, and bring these player the younger players into a higher standard. It's about building a product that uh, is competitive um, and uh, bringing in a uh, a winning culture back into uh, the group um, in the iteration of the. The, one, the hockey league or the one hockey uh, competition. So hopefully we can um, perform to the best of our ability and create a culture that's a winning culture. You mentioned some of the new faces in the team, those younger players. Anyone that we should keep our eye on? Oh, there's uh, Abby Wilson. You've, uh, he's a young, talented player on the verge of playing for Australia. I think she'll be there for uh, uh, a few years to come. Uh, Courtney Chanel is another one on the edge of Australia who's um, uh, been uh, identified as a really talented young player. Um, and uh, there's a couple of uh, really young um, players. Uh, Alana Kavanagh is a, a cracking young potential uh, Australian player that's been picked up in a few squads and uh, potentially will go to the Junior World Cup next year. So uh, there's, a, there's an exciting time. So I, I've come into this job with fresh eyes and uh, I'm really excited about the talent that is uh, growing uh, as part of New South Wales. The, the job that they're doing here in New South Wales, developing this talent is, uh, is amazing. We just need an opportunity to grow a, a culture and uh, the team that we uh, need to uh, have to uh, look up to and um, a, a style of hockey that we want to develop in New South Wales needs to um, be re-established I think and uh, allow these young kids to uh, be the forefront of Australian hockey in the future. 
So you're new to the role of coaching the Pride team. Have, have you had much to do with the women so far? And you've spoken about culture. Is that one of the things that you want to really instill uh, in them moving forward as the new coach? Culture in sport is a big thing for me. I, if you look at any sport and any um, team sport, then uh, they talk a lot about culture. They talk a lot about character of players. And uh, for me, it's the essence of uh, developing a high quality side is the culture that you uh, want to uh, bring to the game. Um, I, I, this is my second iteration into the, the state team. And many years ago, I did coach the previous AHL competition, but. Uh, I've learnt the importance of developing a group and the characters within that group and how that will potentially lead to the, the, the culture that you have in a team and uh, like I said it has to be a winning culture, it has to be a, a, a team that's uh, of good character uh, and um, understands that um, we are here as uh, an opportunity to create it or to start a legacy in New South Wales hockey. And, it's really important that we uh, understand how to go about that and the people involved in that. So I'm really excited about um, bringing some of those ideas and thoughts into um, the, the One Pride or the Pride team for this year. Brilliant, Peter, I love those words. Really looking forward to seeing what you bring to the table with those women later in the Hockey One season that's coming up in October. Now let's take a look at the men's Pride team that is being announced as well. Here we go, we see a lot of experience that's been brought into this team as well. Brent, talk us through this team. Yeah, well, this is a, um, you know, a, a strong team that uh, we've selected. Uh, there's been 11 nationally identified players. Uh, like I said, seven out of them are going to the Olympic Games. Uh, eight guys are in the national squad. So a depth of talent there and that have been already identified through the national program. Off the back of that, we've got some young uh, Junior World Cup athletes that will come into the group as well. But also we've uh, had the opportunity to identify some of the athletes that are probably haven't blossomed as early um, or gone out of the junior age groups and, and they're performing really well at the state championships and, and also their club competition which is providing them that opportunity to grow and develop. So they're, they're, there is a lot of opportunity for, for players to, to play with the Pride this year. Um, and then there's a lot of good talent coming through that uh, really adds to the challenge of us selecting our final 20 and, and then 15 players each week. Well, you are the reigning champs. Do you think you can go back to back? <laughs> Always <laughs> want to try and go back to back for sure. You know, it was amazing to win it in 2019. I think, uh, again, there was a, a lot of talent in there as I look at some of them pictures and the enjoyment that the, the boys had. Uh, we had a fun time. Um, we performed really well, undefeated throughout that whole series. And, you know, 2021, hopefully we can go back to back in the hockey one. Um, there's, there, like I said, there's enough talent there and we're going to be challenged a little bit potentially. Um, there, might, there might be some players looking to play in Europe post the, the Olympic Games. Uh, so, but what that does is provide another opportunity for our uh, national development squad players and other talent throughout New South Wales to, to step up and uh, you know, I'm really confident that we'll do well. well See, sorry Tamsin, yeah, if right. I can interrupt, is that this is the culture that I'm talking about is that the, the men have a really, really good winning culture and they've been successful. Brent mentioned it earlier, is that they're, 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 there, to the, they're there to win. So we need to get that the essence of that winning culture back into the women's side of things. So I'm going to take some uh, um, opportunities to talk to Brent about how he creates that winning culture within this group and bring it into the women's side of things. And Brent, you've been at the pinnacle of your sport as a player. How did you find coaching that inaugural season? Well, I, uh, fortunately, um, as a part of the New South Wales Institute of Sport, I've been a uh, high performance coach there for, for about six years now. And um, I've learned a lot of things along the way in the transition, obviously from an, an elite athlete um, and the success of the Olympic Games. But uh, transition into that, into coaching, you know, I think I still have the same values, the same cultures, the same passion to succeed. And, and it's a matter of uh, instilling those elite behaviours uh, onto, our, onto our athletes and um, with the pride, that's what we've done in 2019. So um, really looking forward to taking that opportunity. And, the, and I think it's going to be more of a challenging year. Um, 2019, 
like I said, we had the talent to, to do it. It was just a matter about nurturing and, and athletes understanding their roles within the team and, and, and really playing together as a team where we had a lot of individuals before. I think as we move forward in, into this season, um, it's a matter of how we then develop uh, our way of play, uh, something that's going to be probably a little bit more challenged. Um, but we still want to play with the freedom, the flair, the fun, the enjoyment, um, but with the passion to win for sure. Now the New South Wales Open State champs were on the weekend and Illawarra South Coast did brilliantly. There was a lot of talent on show. Now you spoke about before that you've got a squad of 30 and you've got to cut it down to 20. Um, there's amazing players on this list. Flynn Ogilvie played brilliant in that first uh, Hockey One season. How are you going to cut that list out? Yeah, it, it's going to be difficult, you know, and I think we, the idea, I guess, with the, the fact that we can play uh, as a, a professional team, se semi-professional team, we're playing over seven, seven rounds or seven weeks. Um, each week is going to be a tough selection. It's like the, the AFL or the, or the Rugby League where they're making those selections each week. It's going to come down to form, it's going to come down to fitness, um, injuries, those types of things. But, you know, the, the thing that all, all I've got to do is really get everybody into the best mindset, uh, making sure that they're ready to perform and step on uh, for the pride and, and to do well. So it's going to be a challenge, but, you know, that's our role as coaches and selectors is, is to, to select the best team and the best balance that's going to hopefully get us the result in the end. So um, uh, it's better to have a, a wealth and a depth of talent within a squad rather than looking for players. So. Uh, I'm happy to have that. Well, this season gets underway after the Olympic Games and some of those stars are going to be really accessible to the fans. And having said that, you can get on board with membership for the New South Wales Pride, which is something that you should definitely do. Head to newsouthwalespride.com.au to check out the memberships and get on board because the season starts on October 1st in Melbourne against Hockey Club Melbourne. But then I know you're going to be interested in this one, Peter. The first ever regional game takes place on October 6th in Parks. Now, how important is it that we're taking the game to the regional areas in New South Wales? I, I went to Parks last week on my local um, competition and uh, spoke to the people in Parks and they're already talking about how excited it is, they are to have a, a match of this quality in the region. So it, it's going to be big. I, it's going to be bigger than the Elvis Festival, I think. There are going to be people coming from everywhere, <laughs> maybe not quite as dressed up, but um, it, it's huge. They're talking about it already. It's and people from different parts of the New South Wales are, are we going to go? We're going to. I just hope we can squeeze them all into the Mariah uh, Williams uh, Field because it's not a big area, but um, it's 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 just really good for our sport. It's really good for the kids. It's what we need to do more of. You you look at the state of origin going to North, uh, North Queensland last week and the impact that has on a regional level. This is the equivalent to what we're doing. I'm really appreciative of ACT offering the opportunities for us to play in a regional um, town like Parks. It's, uh, it's really important for our sport. Well, you said that that match could be a sellout. The only way that you can get access early is if you are a membership, you get access to early ticket sales. So get on board. Thank you so much, Peter and Brent for joining us on Pride TV. And also a huge thank you to Kennard Self Storage and Ridges Hotels and Resort. Really appreciate all the fans joining us today on Pride TV. Until next time, see you then.